G'day everyone, my name is Barney and today we're going to look at animating the growth of procedural plants. The code in this video is made using p5.js which is a really great creative coding library for JavaScript and there's a link in the description where you can run this code right now in your browser and follow along with me. We've looked at generating plants a few times in the past and we've used L systems to do it and today we're going to be doing the exact same thing. L systems offer a really great way of creating organic looking shapes and they're really easy to tweak and change so you can make plants that look exactly how you want. L systems can of course be used to generate other things such as fractals or geometric patterns, but I find they really excel for plants because they're hard to generate with other methods. If you've never heard of an L system before, then I highly recommend you check out my first video on the subject, which talks all about an L system and how to use it to make a plant in P5.js. And then I followed that up with another video on how to randomize these plants to get more natural and organic shapes from them. And in this video, we're going to be building on those previous videos. So if you haven't watched them, I highly recommend you check them out and then come back when you're up to speed. But if you need a quick refresher, an L system is essentially a list of rules that can be applied to a string of characters. And each rule tells us how to turn one character into another character or multiple characters in the next generation of the L system. So very quickly, they can become more complex and more intricate shapes. So the output of the L system is just a string of characters and we can then interpret that string of characters however we want and what we're going to be doing is interpreting it visually and creating plants using a string of characters. So like I say, L systems are really great for generating organic shapes. However, the output of the L system is in discrete steps. So each generation, the plant has grown quite a bit since the last generation. And obviously this isn't how plants actually grow in real life. It's a very smooth process over time where the plant grows up. So what we're doing today is figuring out all the in-between steps between two states of the L system. We're gonna be using a technique called linear interpolation or lerping for short. And what lerping does is it lets us smoothly transition between two states. So lerping is commonly used for things such as color. So you can imagine if you wanna smoothly transition something from blue to red, if you give it a T value of zero, then the output will be blue. And if you give it a T value of one, then the output will be red. If you change that T value smoothly over time, you'll get every color in between blue and red. So we can do the exact same thing here for draw rules in our L system. So if you remember from our random L systems video, there is a list of rules here and that takes each character and it has a list of options that can be chosen for that character in the next generation. And we've also got a list of draw rules and this is how we interpret a character and actually display it on the screen. So the first thing I've done to upgrade our L system to allow for lerping is I've added a T value into all of our draw rules. And this will allow us to draw an in-between state in our L system. If we look at the case of drawing one of these berries, you can see that at T0, there will be no radius on the circle we're drawing to represent a berry. And if that T value goes up to one, then it will be the full sized berry. And you can see when we're drawing the F rule, which corresponds to a stalk on this plant, that we are changing the length of the line we're drawing based on that T value. And it's very important when we draw this line that we're also translating with the lerped value as well. Otherwise you'll get this weird dashed line effect that you can see here, which is a cool effect, but not what we're going for. So the draw rules can handle a lerp value, but now we need to figure out which characters should have the lerp value applied to it. If we applied the lerp to every character in our L system string, the plant would be growing from zero every single time. So we need to figure out which characters belong to the previous state and draw them at full size and then figure out which characters belong to the current state and draw them with the lerped value. In my original attempt, I looped through the characters in the current and the previous state at the same time until there was a mismatch between the current and the previous state. So when a mismatch occurred, I would continue looping through the current state, but pause looping through the previous state until they matched up again, and I would lerp all of those characters. And then once they matched up again, I would continue looping through both states at the same time. However, you can quickly see where this falls apart. If the character that was next in the previous state was added as new growth in the current state, then this method would assume we're back to drawing the full size plant of the previous state. And so new growth was being drawn at full size. So it became a question of where does the old growth end and the new growth begin? and when does the new growth end and the old growth resume. And that's when L systems came to the rescue once again. So we can actually bake into the output of the L system where the new growth begins and ends. And to do this, I've updated the rules to incorporate brackets to tell us where the new growth is. This is easiest to see with the F rule. Normally the F turns into two Fs, 
And you can see here that I've bracketed the second F because this is the new growth compared to the previous generation, which already had the F in it. And in the case of a single F being the output, then we have no brackets because the output is the same as the previous generation. And in the case of three Fs, the second two are bracketed because these are the new growth. In the case of the X rule, X isn't actually drawn in the draw rules, so everything that we output from X is new growth compared to what the previous generation had, so all of that is bracketed. I've also added two rules to remove the old brackets from the output of the next generation, and this just means that everything that's in brackets is only the new growth. So now we can have a look at this draw else's lerp function that I've got. As you can see, it takes in a position, so that's an X and a Y, and this is where we're gonna start drawing the L system. And it also takes in the current state as well as the T value, which is how much we wanna lerp. So the first thing I do is I make sure that the T value is actually between zero and one as it should be, because if it's not, you can get some funky looking results. And then I have a variable called lerp on, which is defaulting to false. And so this just lets me know whether we're drawing old growth or new growth. I then translate to the place that we wanna draw the L system and start looping through the state. I then get the character off the state that we're currently up to. If the character is an open bracket, this means that we've started drawing new growth. So we wanna turn that lerp on to be true. And this just means that we'll actually start using our T value. And likewise, if the character is a closed bracket, we wanna turn the lerping off again so that we're drawing the old growth at its full size. I've then got a lerp T variable, which defaults to the T value that was passed into the function. However, However, if we're drawing the old growth, we want to ignore that T value and just draw it at full size, which is a T value of one. And then we use the draw rule to draw that character and we pass in that lerp T value as the T value for our draw function. There's two things going on here. So firstly, our L system has been updated to tell us where the new growth has occurred and what's changed since the last generation. And we've also updated our draw rules to be able to handle drawing in between states. So to put this all together, we're gonna to generate some plants and grow them smoothly using this L system lerp function. At the top of the sketch, we've got a few variables to find. So firstly, we've got the word, which is the current output of the L system, which starts as an X. I've also got the max number of generations that we wanna generate up to, as well as the current generation, which is six and zero respectively. And then I've got a value called growth percentage, which tells us how far into the growing process we are, zero being we've just started and one being fully grown. And this corresponds to the T value that we'll use for our lerp. And then I've also got a growth rate. And so this is how quickly the plant is going to grow. In the draw function, we're first setting the background to be a gray color. And then if our growth percentage is less than one, we wanna to add to that growth percentage so the plant grows over time. You can see here that I'm slowing down the growth rate for the later generations. And this is just because the later generations are a lot more complex. And so slowing it down makes it a bit more smooth to look at. If the growth percentage is already equal to or greater than one, then we're gonna generate the next generation. And you can see that function here. We're only gonna let this function run if the previous generation is fully grown, as you can see with that first if statement. And then in the second if statement, we're checking if we are up to the max generation. And if we are, we're just resetting the current generation and the word of the L system. And then we're using the generate function, which is the exact same as the generate function from our previous L system video, but I'll just quickly show the function here. And once that's generated, we advance the current generation and set the growth percentage back to zero. Moving back to the draw function, we're gonna use our draw L sys lerp function to draw our L system on the screen. You can see we're giving it a position of the bottom middle of the screen and we're passing in our word that we've generated as well as the growth percentage. So I'm coming up with the T value for our lerp by just advancing through it over time. However, you can come up with the T value however you want. One idea could be to use the sine or cosine function to oscillate the value between the two states or any other number of things you can come up with. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I've always wanted a way to be able to grow plants smoothly with code, and I think this is finally the method that could work for me. If you have any ideas of how to improve this system or what you're gonna use it for, I would love to hear them in the comments, as well as any suggestions for future videos you'd like to see. And if you wanna see another generation technique, I recommend you check out my video here about simulating watercolor paint. I'll see you next time.